Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Two weeks ago, I reviewed a mini engraver. It was my first engraver and I had a lot of fun with it. It can engrave on many different materials, including paper, cloth, wood, glass, and coated metal, but it was not designed for cutting. Today, I'm going to review this ComGrow ComGo Z1 laser engraver. The major difference between this and the mini engraver is that the Z1 has a larger volume, it moves much faster, and it comes with a more powerful laser module. You can choose the 5 watt laser for $299 or the 10 watt one for $499. As I would like to engrave at a higher speed and use this machine to do more cutting, I will test out the 10 watt module. Let's open up the box and see what's inside. The structure of this machine is quite simple. We have four aluminum extrusions to form the main body, the gantry, the electronic enclosure, four legs, the power supply, the laser module, screws, belts, the safety goggles, and some sample plywood boards. The assembly should be quite straightforward. I'll just spend a few minutes walking through it. First, use these four extrusions to form the body of the machine. To make sure you align them correctly, check these four screw holes, and they should be facing outward. Grab four long screws from the bag and finger tighten it to one screw hole of the wider extrusion. Do the same to all four corners. Make the frame level and tighten them. It should look like this. You may notice that the extrusions are not aligned as you expected, but this is actually how it's supposed to be. The space here is reserved for the end caps, which will be installed later. Flip it over and we can now slide the gantry to the frame. Check if the motion is smooth and that no single wheel can spin alone. When you turn a wheel, the whole frame should move together and adjust the eccentric nuts if necessary. Flip it upside down, and we will use two M5 screws to mount the electronic enclosure. Prepare four short screws and T-nuts, and you only need to put one on each leg. The T-nuts are on the taller side of the legs. Then, install the legs on the base. Use another short screw to secure it, tighten the T-nuts, and lock it to the extrusion. Do the same to all four corners. You can use the cable clip that came with the machine to secure the cable. Now the machine should look like this. Flip it again and we will install the belts. Grab the belts and prepare four sets of square nuts and bolts. These square nuts are used to secure the belts. There are two ways to install the belt. You can slide it under the rubber wheels, then lift it up and let it go around the pulley wheel with teeth. Then use a square nut at one end to secure the belt. Do the same to the other side and make sure the belt is tight. You can also slide it under the first rubber wheel. Go around the pulley with teeth and finally slide it under the second rubber wheel. However, I did find the first way a lot easier. Use two square nuts to tighten the belt at both ends. Now, when you move the gantry, you can feel some drag at the belts and stepper motors are connected. We can now put the end caps at each corner. Remove the mount from the gantry by loosening four large hand-tightened bolts. Put the mount on the back of the laser module and secure it with M3 screws. Finger tighten it back on the gantry. We still need to adjust the height to change the focus depending on the thickness of the engraving materials when we start engraving. Let's connect some cables. There are two cables in the laser module, the power cable with black and red wires and the PWM cable with black and yellow wires, which is used to control the power level. Connect the Y-axis limit switch on the right side of the machine, followed by the Y-stepper motor. On the left side, the other Y-motor cable is already connected out of the box. If not, you also need to connect it. Okay, we can now try moving the X and Y-axis and see if they move smoothly. I will also check to make sure the cable doesn't get into the way of the Y-limit switch. We can now connect the power adapter and use the USB cable to connect to our computer to set up this machine. 
The two most popular softwares used to control a laser engraver are Laser Gribble and Lightburn, and I personally prefer using Lightburn. I will use Lightburn to set up the machine. No matter what machine or software you use, the procedure should be pretty similar. I will download the free trial version. It unlocks all the features for 30 days, and you can consider buying it if you like it. Then, I will install it using all the default options. Once the software is started, a device manager will show up. Power on the laser engraver and connect to the computer. Select Find My Laser and press Next. It will take a few seconds to search all your ports. Okay, this 400 by 400 one is our machine. Select Add Device, name it Comgirl Z1, and we will just leave the default settings to set our home position or the origin to the front left. We will also home the machine on startup. Select Next and Finish and we are all set. Let's try to home the machine and see if everything is working fine. Okay, let's put a half inch thick piece of plywood under this machine so it won't engrave on the table. I also used a box fan to pull out the smoke, which you will be able to see when we start engraving. For the materials, I bought a few different types of wood from Home Depot. The first one I will try is this very cheap 5mm thick 2 feet by 4 feet plywood for underlayment. I just put it on top of the half inch thick board and used another two pieces of wood to level it. Let's start with engraving some sample files from the micro SD card of this machine. As we just want to try what speed and power we need for this type of material, I just resized it to around 100mm wide. I will start from the top right corner and engrave something column by column so I can maximize the usable surface of the board. I will change the job origin to top right. The starting position is the current position. Select this frame for a preview. The laser module will go around so we can confirm the area we want to work in. If you hold down the shift key, the laser dot will also turn on when doing a preview. Okay, it looks fine. The default speed is 5,000 millimeters per minute and the power is 100%. Let's take a look at the manufacturer's reference. It seems the numbers are the same, so I will just select start. Okay, it's generating some smoke and the box fan is going to suck it out. Let's take a closer look. It seems 100% power is too much for this kind of material. It's burning too much and it's too dark. In this case, I will keep the 5,000mm speed, but reduce the power. Go back to the software and we will try 60% this time. I will move the laser module down a bit and we will engrave the same butterfly. 60% looks much better. At 5,000mm per minute, engraving this butterfly took around 12 minutes. Next, I will try to engrave this card and cut it out. Let's take a preview. For engraving, it will also take around 12 minutes. Let's add a rectangle outside. I will add radius to the corners to match the card. Then, using this tool to align the center, I will change the rectangle to a red color, the mode to line instead of fill, the speed to 90, and the power is 100%. Let's preview it again, scan the image, and then cut it out at a slower speed. Okay, let's move the laser to another position and start the job. 60% power for engraving on this material looks good. Followed by the 90mm per minute cutout. It's a little too dark at the edges. Let's lift up the board and see if it cuts through. I can remove it from the bottom and it actually looks okay. Then, I will cut out a picture stand for this card. Using the same speed and power, it will take about 6.5 minutes. It's actually too dark, but at least it does the job as a stand. As you can see, using 90 millimeters per minute cuts quite deep even on the board underneath. I also tried to increase the speed to 100 and 120. With faster speed, it burns less time on the surface, so these two look a little bit nicer. I will make another disc with text engraving around the circle, image inside, and finally cut it out. I will try to use even faster speed for cutting. Let's try 200 millimeters per minute and 100% power and see if it can cut out the shape. Okay. 
Okay, the right side of the disc looks perfect. The left side is still a little bit too much, but I think it looks much better than before. If we take a look at the board underneath, it still cuts around 2mm into the board, so I think 220 may be the spot. For laser cutting, you really need to spend time to dial in the settings for different materials. Next, I will try some better material. This solid walnut wood board is quite expensive. This 5.5 by 24 inch board costs $16, which is 12 times more expensive than the 5mm plywood. The thickness is quarter inch, which is around 6.35 millimeters. I will first try to cut the picture stand and see how it looks. Unfortunately, I forgot to adjust the focus after changing to this thicker material. Since the machine was placed on top of the cheap plywood before, the material is now 6.35 millimeters closer to the laser. After I start the job, it burns the wood and melts the acrylic protector on the laser module. In this case, I just removed the protector and wore the goggles to continue. Since this walnut board is thicker and the density is higher, I will use 90 millimeters per minute and 100% power to cut it. It turns out pretty nice. The edges are much cleaner than a cheap plywood. Next, I will engrave a picture on this board. I will use light burn to resize and adjust the picture. I think it looks okay. I will also add a rectangle to cut it out. I still need to change it to the operation for cut out. Let's do a preview and start the job. This material is really nice. It won't easily burn like the cheap plywood and the edges are very beautiful. Let's try some vector engraving on this board. I will make a map with some text engraving and use the same parameters to cut it out. It should take less than 10 minutes to finish this job. The preview looks fine, so I will send the job to the machine. I'm quite happy with the result. This walnut board is expensive, but the result is really nice. Finally, I will try this BC plywood. I did some research, and BC means one side is B grade and one side is C grade. That means this may not be very high quality, but let's try and see what results we can expect from it. Since this board is large, I will use up the whole work area to make a 400 by 400 piece. I will engrave a USA flag, and then engrave some deep text, and follow it with the same map. Finally, cut it out at 90 millimeters per second and 100% power. The engrave came out pretty nice and it looks like an old map, but somehow I was not able to cut through this board, even though it said it was a quarter inch. When I compared it to the walnut board, which is also a quarter inch, this BC plywood is like 30% thicker. I think this is the reason why the machine can't cut through. I will do a final test to find out how thick of a material this machine can cut. I will use this poplar wood. It's also hardwood, but it's cheaper than walnut. It's a half inch thick, which is about 12.5 millimeters. First, I tried to cut a square with one pass without success. Then, I will try different passes and see how deep it can be cut. I started with one pass. As you can see, it cuts deep down to around half of the thickness, which is about 6 millimeters. Then, I moved the wood forward and tried two passes. This time it cut about two thirds. I will try three passes and see if it can cut through. As you can see, Three passes is almost the same as two passes. It still goes around two thirds, but I think the laser can't focus on the spot longer than eight to nine millimeters. But I will try to cut four passes and see if that's the case. Okay, let's take a closer look at all four passes. 
the difference between the first and second pass is obvious, but the second, third, and fourth passes are quite similar. So, it seems the limit of this machine is to cut up to 8 or 9 millimeter thick wood. Okay, here are all the parts we made with this machine. We had a lot of fun playing with this laser engraver and trying different kinds of wood. We hope you enjoyed this video. The laser module we used is a 10 watt one. For engraving, both 5 watt and 10 watt can get the job done. The only difference is you can engrave 2 times faster using a 10 watt module. But for cutting, the 5 watt can only cut up to 4 millimeters of wood according to the manual. A 10 watt can cut up to 8 millimeters of solid wood based on our own test. If you're interested in this machine, I put the link under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.